Hey everybody, this is Mitch with MacNet Construction. Uh, we're back again with another video. This is part six, I believe, um, on the Rocky Bay build in Gig Harbor, Washington. This is our waterfront rental property we're building. Um, just kind of want to talk about the, uh, the ICF wall pour since it's uh, one of the most critical parts of this entire build. Um, so we used Holroyd um, for the company for the concrete. Uh, generally speaking, for the ICF mix, we want it to be around 3,000 or 3,000 psi or greater uh, concrete itself. Uh, the aggregate is 3 8 inch, and the slump should be around 5 to 6 inches in our experience. Um, the uh, pumping of the ICF walls themselves is done in lifts. Uh, this makes sense conceptually because the concrete settles as you move your way around, pouring the wall. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to pour a wall from bottom to top before moving because it would result probably in the wall failing itself. Um, the lifts are typically four feet at a time, so you can pour from the, uh, the bottom of the window height or up to the bottom of the window height and then vibrate before moving the neck to the next four foot lift. Uh, 16 foot walls are usually the maximum height the uh, contractors such as us typically pour with standard bracing uh, before moving to a tall wall bracing system. Uh, each lift is vibrated, and there's typically a 45-minute wait between lifts. Uh, the 45-minute wait time allows the lower four feet of the lift to set up before placing the second lift. Uh, in turn, this reduces the lateral pressure placed on the lower four feet of the forms as the second lift is being pulled. Uh, when pouring, a uh, restrictor end like a double L nozzle is recommended with a maximum of three inches um, to reduce any experienced concrete surge and the, uh, the person pouring should work in a standard direction um, that they choose. And they need to be careful to pour the concrete to the bottom of the form instead of allowing the concrete to just hit the interior of the walls of the forms themselves. Uh, when pouring near the, uh, the corners of the walls, it's best to pour about three feet from each corner and allow the concrete itself to flow directly into the corners instead of pouring directly onto them or into them. Uh, when pouring the openings of the windows and the doors, you'll want to anchor each side of the pour before pouring the first lift. This helps it um, helps it lock into place. Under the windows, you could uh, you probably want to pour um, from the windowsill height directly through the open inspection ports before in, before pouring from the top of the wall. This will ensure that the uh, the complete saturation of the concrete underneath the windows themselves. The, uh, the doors and the windows are bucked out with ICF bucks to prevent thermal loss of exposed concrete and the, uh, the window bucks themselves prevent the openings from collapsing during the pour and they aren't removed until the pour is complete and then the, uh, the concrete is actually set up. Um, the next videos that we have coming out, uh, we'll be working on the, uh, the roof system and prepare the, uh, the pump house wall and the foundation install. So be on the lookout for those. Um, we'll be out recording those this week. Um, should have something out. If not by the end of this week, then early next week. Um, make sure you subscribe and like the video. This helps with the YouTube algorithm. It helps us get exposure, put us on that sidebar, um, you know, so we can continue to get support and continue making videos. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to sh shoot us an email at info at macnac.com or just leave a comment below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.